Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is the very first video that you are clicking on, my name is Nadia and I am 31 weeks pregnant. I will be 32 weeks pregnant in like two days. And this is my very first pregnancy update. I know I'm a little late to the game, but better late than ever. Let's jump right into this pregnancy update. Like I said, I will be 32 weeks in a couple days. So right now I'm like 31 weeks in like five days. I really consider this like a 32 week pregnancy update. Let me tell you my number one symptom right now and it is heartburn and acid reflux. And it is all throughout the day. Like it doesn't matter if it's morning, noon or night. It doesn't matter what I eat, what I don't eat. Literally water gives me heartburn at this point. I have found that I don't have a lot of things that give me much relief. The only thing that kind of helps are like Tums. If I took them as often as I had acid reflux, I would be taking two pills like every two hours which of course I don't want to do so I try to reserve that for like the very end of the night because I feel like my acid reflux kind of like hits its peak at like 9 or 10 o'clock I usually wake up and I'm like about to die like I really feel terrible and I'm sleeping like propped up and I'm eating at least three hours before I go to bed so really like none of the tips and tricks are helping I even have tried drinking milk before bed like nothing helps um like i said the tums kind of give me some relief but that is like my number one symptom right now is heartburn and acid reflux another symptom that i'm having is just being out of breath like walking up the stairs i'm kind of out of breath right now like if i talk too much i get out of breath and this is coming from someone who used to do like orange theory four to five days a week so it's just crazy how like when did I get from just everyday things? I'm just like, I'm mind blown. Braxton Hicks, like my tummy will get like super duper tight and hard. Um, It's not necessarily uncomfortable. It's just like, it just happened. So it doesn't hurt or anything. During my third trimester, the last week and a half or so, is I get like this random upset stomach. It just, it's so weird, but it just happens like in the top part of my abdomen. I don't know how to describe it. It's just like a icky feeling. I just feel sick and it doesn't last for like a really long time. Like it's so strange. It just kind of like comes and goes throughout the day. Um, so just like an icky tummy feeling and the last symptom, no, no, no. <laughs> this is my last normal symptom. My last normal symptom I'm having is just like general discomfort reaching down to like tie my shoes, getting in and out of my car. I have a Jeep Wrangler, so getting in and out of my car is like more challenging than it used to be. And a lot of people are saying like, I'm not even big, like my tummy isn't super big to be almost eight months, but I feel huge. And then, like I said, just overall discomfort with doing like regular, normal, everyday tasks makes me feel even bigger. <laughs> These are my two last pregnancy symptoms that I'm gonna go over, and they're a little strange. <laughs> okay, I'm almost like hesitant to share this on the internet. My number one strange pregnancy symptom is that I'm like really obsessed right now with like strong smells. I'm talking like tire rubber, Sharpies, Vaseline, chemicals, like. I'm really into that and of course I don't indulge in it but if I pass something that is like a really strong smell I'm kind of like <sighs> I'm not going out of my way to like find these smells and like sit there and smell them but I'm really into it no tea no shade my husband and I we do not smoke cigarettes but I generally like when I'm not pregnant do not like the smell of cigarettes and I love the smell of cigarettes right now. I don't come in contact with it all the time, but when I am around it, I'm like, <sighs> it's gotta be a pregnancy symptom because like I said, prior to becoming pregnant, I did not like the smell of cigarettes and like strong chemical smells, they didn't like do anything for me. But right now, <laughs> my last pregnancy symptom that is also very strange is I'm obsessed with like brushing my tongue. Like obviously you brush your teeth, you brush your tongue, whatever, move on. When I tell you right now, I could brush my tongue for like 30 minutes straight 
and still not be satisfied. My thing now is I'll brush it in the opposite direction. Like if you brush your tongue like this, I'll go like this. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's really satisfying and I can't get enough of it. So those are definitely like my two most like odd, strange pregnancy symptoms. So please make me feel a little bit normal and tell me in the comments down below, like I said, what is a weird pregnancy symptom that you experience during your pregnancy? Next up on the pregnancy update is baby girl. I guess thankfully there's really not much to update on her. She is currently in the 40th percentile and weighing in at 3.3 pounds. But this was of course the last time I went to the doctor, which was two and a half weeks ago. I go again this week, so we'll see where she's at. But interestingly enough, she started out in the 90th percentile. Like on my 20 week anatomy scan, she was in the 90th percentile. And it was kind of making me nervous because the doctors were saying that essentially worst case scenario, if she stayed in those upper percentiles, they wanted to maybe talk about inducing me to give me the best chance at a vaginal birth. So that kind of like freaked me out. Girl, slow down. Are you too big for my body? Obviously I'm a first time mom. This is my first pregnancy. So I'm sure it would have been completely fine had she stayed in the upper percentiles the entire pregnancy But I was like very nervous at the fact that they were talking about like inducing now She has gone from the 90th to the 77th to the 40th percentile And then I was also kind of nervous. Wow, she jumped from 77 to 40th but my um, doctor reassured me, he's like, that's completely fine. Like she's not too big, not too small. She's kind of just like hanging out in the middle. Baby girl is 3.3 pounds, nothing to update on her, which like I said, I guess um, when you're pregnant, no news is good news when it comes to babies. Everything seems to be checking out pretty normal for her. I wanted to give you guys a bump date. This is how baby girl is looking. Like I said, we are pretty much at 31 weeks and five days, almost 32 weeks. So this is how we are looking, guys. She has also given me quite a bit of junk in the trunk. <laughs> as far as my health is concerned, I am doing well. They haven't mentioned anything about like my weight gain or anything. My stomach is measuring on time. All of that is great. The only thing that is a concern is my low line placenta or placenta previa. I think that's how it's pronounced. Placenta previa is just a low line placenta. This was brought up in my 20 week anatomy scan. And at the time he was no big deal, like 98 or 96% of cases kind of just resolve themselves as pregnancy goes on. Uterus expands, that was kind of that. For my following appointment after that, they were kind of like, so the placenta is still lying low, there's still time for it to move. However, if it does not move, you know, we, we might want to start talking about like a C-section. From how they explained it, it just made it seem that if I went into natural birth, obviously things were going to progress and essentially baby girl would try to push through the placenta which isn't good for baby girl or me so that was kind of what I was told however they of course followed up with saying like we're still hopeful there's still a ton of time your uterus is still expanding that was at I believe like my 24 or 25 week appointment rewind to my last appointment which was like i said two and a half weeks ago my placenta still has not moved so at that point they're saying at my next appointment which is coming up this week if my placenta still hasn't moved again they are going to basically have me pick out a c-section date and it's just to be on the cautious side um, because at this point in my pregnancy i will be going to the doctor a lot more frequently and they are going to check my placenta every single time that i go although i might have a c-section date scheduled if anything changes up until that c-section date i will uh, be able to move forward with a traditional, I shouldn't say traditional, but a vaginal birth. That last appointment, I was a little emotional in the beginning of the appointment because at my doctor's office, how it works is they have like a, a tech do your ultrasound first and then the doctor comes in to 
you know, go over the findings and things like that. You know, they, t they tell you what they're looking at when they're looking at it, but they don't go into detail because that's the doctor's job. So when she was like, okay, we are, you know, I'm gonna look at the placenta and it was, she was like way down here. Of course, you know, I've been doing my research. I know that that's not the correct placement. So I was like, is my placenta still low? And of course she couldn't tell me. And I just knew from like where she was snapping the pictures that my placenta probably hadn't moved. So at that moment, like I kind of already knew before the doctor even came in to tell me, I was like, getting all watery eyed and I'm like, just, I just thought, you know, maybe it had moved since my last appointment and I was hopeful for that. So of course my doctor came in and he confirmed that my placenta was still lying low, but he is like, I love, 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 love my doctor and OBGYN, like the nurses. I love everyone at um, my office and he's just so kind and he really puts you at ease with whatever is going on. But of course they did bring up the C-section again and then once I saw my OB, they brought it up again. So like I said, that's kind of the update if my placenta previa situation hasn't been resolved by my next appointment. We are gonna go ahead and schedule a C-section, but the C-section is still not set in stone uh, because they're gonna continue to monitor every week until that date. So it's kind of up in the air and I have honestly made peace with it either way because I feel like there are pros and cons to having a C-section and there are pros and cons to having a natural, not natural, a vaginal birth, I should say. So I've just made peace with it either way. Obviously a vaginal birth, I've heard from many moms and close friends that the recovery is easier and I do have people in my life who have had both. They've had a C-section and a vaginal birth and vaginal birth recovery from everyone I hear is just a lot easier. And then one of the cons of course of having a vaginal birth is you don't know when you're gonna go into labor so there's just this element of the unknown and baby girl's birthday or baby girl's due date is super duper close to Christmas. So I could very well, if I have a vaginal birth, be in the hospital on Christmas around that time. So in my head, I've kind of like glamorized a C-section if I have to have it because I'm like, well, I can pick her birthday, which is fun. And I can take some of the stress of the unknown with obviously knowing exactly when I'm gonna go in and have her. Those are two of the like glamorous sides. And then another glamorous aspect to me, very personal, <laughs> is that I would be having her a little bit earlier than like the 40 weeks. Um, we would be looking more so at 37 weeks because their fear, like I said earlier, is that I could go into uh, labor naturally. That just wouldn't be ideal because that's what we're trying to prevent. So they would, they would wanna get me in the earlier stages of my pregnancy so I don't risk that. So with that being said, some girls love being pregnant. I'm not that girl. I am so blessed to have had a healthy pregnancy thus far and I'm so blessed to be welcoming this child, but I don't think that there's anything wrong with like not loving <laughs> sharing your body um, for nine to 10 months. You go through so many like physical changes and like mental changes. It's just a lot. You're sharing your space and like I said, I'm blessed to be doing so, but like, I want her in my arms. I prefer her in my arms than in my stomach. So there's no shame, y'all. You can still love your child and not like be in love with the actual process of making them and creating them. So for me, that is kind of something that is made it a little bit of an easier pill to swallow, a little less time in the, in the cook shop. That is my official pregnancy update here on YouTube. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.